From toddlers to teenagers, it's never too late to learn the game of basketball. Taylor Cage has more on the story. Kids came out to North Weddington Gym to learn more about the legendary game of basketball. Sports Recreation Director Adam Smith says it's vital for kids to get involved in the sport. You not only develop physical skills, um, but you also develop social skills. Kids were broken off into groups based on age and skill level. The youngsters played games such as Big Ten and Knockout. Coaches encouraged teamwork and positive attitudes from the players. One recreation instructor, Ishmael Robles, says helping kids play basketball brings out the kid in him. I'm not that old, but at the same time, being around older people definitely drains the life out of you. And I think that being around kids, it's a great job. I mean, it's a great experience. They teach you more than you even really know that they're teaching you. As the kids practice dribbling, defense skills, and shooting, parents watch and cheered on from the sidelines. One parent, Barbara Inglehart, loves that her son is playing basketball. I just really love it. He's a nine-year-old boy and he's really tall for his age. He's very athletic and so I love how it promotes team camaraderie and it's a sport that's a team sport but it also has the individual responsibility. So I think that's really important to develop in a young boy. Whereas Karen Budge says although her son wants to be the next Kobe Bryant, getting involved in a sport is much more important than that. To create a whole body, mind, body, spirit person you can't just be all academic. You have to have sports. Kids are getting a head start in learning the fundamentals of basketball, from passing to dribbling. In Studio City, I'm Taylor Cage, reporting for Valley View News. And now here's Darren Johnson with updates on Michael Vick's new injury and a surprising 3-0 starts for, would you believe, the Bills and Lions. Thanks, Courtney. Endurance swimmer Diana Nyad's third attempt to swim from Florida to Cuba has come to a disappointing end. The main obstacle ended up being nature itself. Nyad was stung by a venomous Portuguese man of war. This happened twice. Nyad continued swimming after the second sting, but ended up having to stop on day two. 41 hours into her trek across the Caribbean. Nyad's second attempt to make the swim ended after she suffered an asthma attack. Nyad said she had a bad reaction to medicine she had taken. Nyad first attempted to cross the Caribbean at age 28, but she did so with a shark cage around her. Her two most recent attempts were done without a cage. In the MLB, the Dodgers toppled the Padres with a 6-2 victory. This was pitcher Clayton Kershaw's 21st victory, making him eligible for the Cy Young Award. The victory means Kershaw will probably win the National League Triple Crown in pitching. Kershaw struck out 248 batters, which is the most since 1966 for a Dodger pitcher. The American and National League wild card playoff berths are still up for grabs, with four games remaining. In the National League, the Braves and the Cardinals are fighting for the wild card spot. In the American League, the Red Sox and the Tampa Bay Rays are also battling out for their wild card spot. In college football, the Bruins took down the Oregon State Beavers 27-19, winning their first conference opener since 2007. UCLA's defense came through during the second half of the game. Defensive end Damian Hayes put a stop to running back Terran Howard on 4th and 1 at the 34-yard line. Ten minutes left. Sheldon Price would also cut off Oregon State wide receiver James Rogers. He stopped a 4th down pass at the 22-yard line. Four minutes left. USC didn't have as much luck, losing to Arizona State 43-22. This was Arizona's first win against USC since 1999, and that ended an 11-game losing streak to the Trojans. Arizona running back Cameron Marshall ran for 141 yards and scored three touchdowns to clinch Arizona's victory. Notre Dame quarterback Tommy Reese went 8-for-8 eight eight on the game-winning drive to give the Fighting Irish the win over the Pittsburgh Panthers, taking their season record to 2-2. Elsewhere in college football, the Oakland Holman Sooners beat the Missouri Tigers 38-28. That's revenge for their loss to Missouri last year. Finally, the LSU Tigers are sticking their place for the number one college football team after their 47-21 victory over the West Virginia Mountaineers. Even with quarterback Jordan Jefferson suspended, LSU is still 4-0 this season. Over in the big leagues of football, the Buffalo Bills and Detroit Lions both remain undefeated. 
The Bills got a home game victory over the New England Patriots after Tom Brady threw four interceptions. The Lions managed to beat the Minnesota Vikings 26-23 in overtime. This was a tough loss for the Vikings. They held a 20-0 lead at halftime, and this is their third game in a row that they've lost after holding double-digit leads at halftime. And that's all for sports. Back to you, Brendan. If you thought college students were past the age of spelling bees, think again. These theater majors are participating in a spelling bee, and it's happening in fictional Putnam County. Valley View's Lori Bolivan has the story. Actors apply their final touch-ups backstage before the show. Theater veteran Kelsey Porter has performed in six department musicals. I personally love musicals uh, because I think it's, it's just so much fun and, and once you get going, it involves the audience and, and the actors and it's just, it's just good fun. Words, words the show is about a group of 12 year olds who compete against each other in hopes of winning first place in the county spelling bee championship. Their individual stories about growing up are told in the form of the bee. Students work behind the scenes as well. Alex Meth is in charge of all the show's props. I will be backstage every night to make certain the props are uh, set and they're ready and they go off on time and make the show look wonderful. It's faculty directed, um, but the students in the show, the students doing all the work on the production, costume, scenery, light, sound, they're all students. Department head and director Gary Lennon encourages people to see the show and support the students. You're really uh, kind of shaping the future of, uh, of theater in a way. And if you are planning on seeing the show, you may just wind up on stage. At every performance, audience volunteers are selected to join the cast and participate as spellers. I hope I do well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a horrible speller. So whether you're in the mood for song and dance or just wish to brush up on your spelling, this show has plenty to offer. The 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee performs Wednesday through Saturday evenings with a matinee on Sunday and runs through October 2nd at Nordoff Hall's Little Theater. At Cal State Northridge, I'm Lori Bullivan with Valley View News. The first woman from Africa to win the Nobel Peace Prize has died. Wangari Matai died in a Nairobi hospital after battling cancer. Matai won the 2004 Peace Prize for promoting sustainable development, democracy, and peace. The 71-year-old environmentalist founded a tree planting campaign called the Green Belt Movement. The campaign has fought deforestation and gave people access to vital resources. Matai leaves behind three children and a granddaughter. Officials who run the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum have charged taxpayers thousands of dollars for gasoline and other expenses. The Los Angeles Times reports finance director Ronald Letter Kramer has submitted $7,600 in fuel bills since 2008. Receipts obtained through the California Public Records Act show four other stadium administrators racked up similar bills. Thousands of dollars were also spent on Riviera Country Club golf tournaments, hotels, steakhouse lunches, and Bel Air Country Club breakfasts. These newly disclosed expenditures by the Times show that the Coliseum's governing commission imposed few cost controls. The nine commissioners are appointees of the state, the city of Los Angeles, and the county board of supervisors. Coming up, Elton John is producing a biopic on himself, and AT&T customers experience a blackout in service. Don't go away.